All right, so we're just going to take some quick notes on your calorimetry lab that we're going to do next class period. First of all, your task is to identify some unknown metal. But you might be asking, well, how am I going to do that? The way we're going to do it is we're going to calculate the specific heat, or the C value, and then we're going to compare that C value to some known values. So here's the setup for the lab. We're going to start off with a piece of hot metal, and the initial temperature of that metal will be known, and we can measure the mass of that metal because we'll need to know both of those things. In addition to the hot metal, you're going to have a cup full of water. You will need to measure the mass of the water, and you'll need to measure the initial temperature of the water. Then you're going to put the hot metal into the water, and because of the first law of thermodynamics, the metal is going to lose some of its heat to the water, and so the temperature of the metal will go down, and the temperature of the water will go up. So now you should be thinking, well, I could use the specific heat equation to find C for the metal. But I have a problem. The problem is I don't know how much heat the metal will lose, and I've learned that there's no way to calculate, or I'm sorry, not to calculate, but there's no way to measure heat. So here's a concept that you may or may not understand. It's kind of common sense. The amount of heat that the metal loses, so that negative Q, is going to be equal to the amount of heat that the water gains. So we can find the heat lost by the metal by calculating the heat gained by the water. So to do that, we're going to use the specific heat equation again, but this time we're not going to focus on the metal, we're going to focus on the water. I can measure the mass of the water, I already know the specific heat of water, and then I can measure both the final and the initial temperatures of the water. Once I have all that information, then I can calculate Q. And so Q is the amount of heat gained by the water. And so that Q should have a positive value. Well then, that Q, that heat gained by the water is equal to the amount of heat lost by the metal. So now I can use, I can um, now use that information in another equation to find the specific heat of the metal. So once again, I have the specific heat equation, but this time it's for the metal. And this time I'm going to be solving it for the specific heat. So I've rearranged the equation to solve for C. Now, the Q is going to come from the water because it's the amount of heat that the water gained is how much heat the metal lost. And so technically that Q should have a negative sign on it. So even though I said it's the same as water, it's Q, you should make it negative Q. And then the mass of the metal you'll have to measure, the final temperature you'll have to measure, and the initial temperature you'll have to measure. But once you have all that data, you can then calculate the specific heat of the metal. And once you have that specific heat, you can compare it to known values and then you can determine what type of metal it was in your sample.